Where do you store your drill bits? If you're like me, you'll leave it either in the chuck or set it on the table next to it and hopefully come back later on and put it away. We'll naturally put things in the simplest places that we can. It's human nature 101. So let me go ahead and show you my current setup for my drill bits. A few years ago, I took a kitchen cabinet and turned it into a drill press cabinet. I've got my drill bits here on the side in their cases. They're attached with these magnetic strips. And for the most part, it does a really good job of keeping everything organized. The problem that I run into is that I usually wait till the very end of the day to put things away because it takes a lot to, to take it off, open it up, and put the drill bit away. Now, some of you might remember the shadow box Forzner bit set that I made here. It's really easy as soon as I'm done using something, I can slide it back inside the hole. If I happen to use one of these with a drill, I know which one I'm missing and I can go look for it and put it away. I've lost lots of drill bits in the past but I've never lost any of these because it's simple for me to put them away and I know what I'm missing. So I got to thinking, why not take all my drill bits and use that shadow box method to keep them all together? That means that as soon as I'm done using it, I put it away and I never lose anything. Let me show you what I came up with. How about an M, Pat? Let's make things. Okay, so instead of pulling out my drill bit case, finding the drill bit that I need, and then putting it in the drill bit chuck to have to, again, go back and redo this whole process of putting it away at the end of the day. I came up with this. It basically has all my drill bits, everything up here. I've got all my sizes on here. I've got spade bits. I've got my Forstner bits. I have everything that I ever use on my drill press ready to use. Once I use my Forstner bit, I put it back away. I'm always clean and I never have to find bits. It's really a very good system. And again, what I really like about this is that it's not just one peg for each of these. Each hole has its own separate size. Now, before we get started, I have a web page for this. I have a much longer video that will walk you step by step through building this, but let's get started. This is a relatively easy project that I think will work with most drill presses. The one that I'm making here fits what I have, but you can scale it up or down to suit yourself. I'm gluing four three quarter inch squares that are four inches by four inches. Okay, we'll give this some time to dry and we'll come back. The end width will be slightly over three inches. If you're interested in this particular pattern that I'm using here, I have it in three different formats, an SVG file, a light burn file as well as a JPEG. All three are on my webpage and bundled together in a zip and it is completely free to download. While I'm showing the paper pattern here, I didn't use it. Instead, I laser engraved it with my Order 3. I have a review of this in the description, but it's perfect for projects like this. With both blocks done, it's time to drill each hole out. But before you do, you'll obviously want to have a complete set to work with. I bought this carbide Forzner bit set off Amazon for less than about $60, and it has pretty much every size I've ever used. If you're interested, I have a link to it in the description. Next, I strategically drilled each of the holes by first drilling the larger holes before drilling the shaft holes. Of course, this was just for the Forzner and spade bits. For the brad point bits, I used the larger size up for each of the holes. If you don't do this, your bits will stick. So I recommend getting a set of brad point bits that are a 64th away from each other. Now, if we go back to my original inspiration for this project, you'll see that I've got my Forzner bits on a block at an angle. When I first made this, I wasn't sure how I was going to attach it to my drill press unit here, but I ended up just leaving it at an angle and I was happy with it. it. I can pull each one of these out. So I thought I'd do the same thing with my new drill bit organizer by cutting it at an angle. This allows me to be able to see each of the sizes and be able to know what I'm pulling out. To make the angles, I measured out 3 eighths of an inch on the back and drew a diagonal to the front. I cut it on the bandsaw before cleaning it on the sander. Back at the bench, you can see it's just a slight angle. I'm happy with this. Even though I'm making this to attach to my drill press, you don't have to. It'll work fine next to your drill press. You could even make it one solid piece instead of the two separate blocks. Since I'm attaching this to my drill press, I'm going to cut two channels that work on both the front and back of the column. Because I've cut the angle on the bottom, I'm using my sled to cut the channel. You would not want to cut this against the fence. I'm adding a die, but as you've seen so far, it's only to bring out the depth of the curly maple. Most of the coloring, as you can see, is sanded off. In a second, you'll see how much depth this brings out. 
Next, I cut a couple threaded rods to size, which is the column and the length of the two blocks together. I wanted to keep things very simple so that I can easily detach this if I need to use more of the drill press table. To do this, I epoxied a rod on one block and the second rod on the second block. If you haven't seen my epoxy baby bottle nipple bite size, I'll have that in the description. It's a great hack for using epoxy. I added epoxy to the bottom of the channel as well as to the rod on the top. These things won't come out anytime soon. In a past bite size video, we talked about using one of these drill gauges. They're really nice because not only does it help you find the drill bit size that you're looking for, but if you have a screw, you can insert it and it'll allow you to know which size to use of, of your drill bits. I have one of these, but I have three cases. I always lost it in one of the three cases, which meant I had to go through each of the three cases. So I decided to add magnets to the side and now I can just easily attach it to my block. I'm just using a couple rare earth magnets. You could use any size really. These are 3 eighths of an inch. I added epoxy before adding the magnets. To add a protective finish, I did a combination of techniques. First, I cut my poly with paint thinner so that I could really get the poly into the wood grain. Cutting poly also makes it easy to apply with a brush without leaving marks behind. I added a couple layers before sanding it with 600 grit. Then I used my buffer with an aluminum oxide compound to get a near mirror result. Finally, I added a coat of Danish oil and you can see how incredible this entire combination of dyes and finishes come together. To attach it to the drill press, you slide each bar into the opposing side and add a knurled thumb knob. You could use a wing nut, but I love the look of these knobs. Then I added my bits. And here we are completed with this. Now I know some are probably thinking, is this ever going to interfere with the work right here? I will keep track of this. I will put in the description down below if I've ever had any problems with it. The thing that I like about this is that if I ever have something that's a little bit bigger that I need to have that space, I can always just turn those two thumb knurled knobs and pull the, it apart with just one pull will take it off. So I'm not really worried about this. But again, I want to make sure that I'm honest with everyone that does watch this. I am going to keep track of it and see if this is just something that becomes really cumbersome and annoying. If this is ever a problem here, I can always set it right here, which is right next to my drill press. So again, you don't have to have this on your drill press. I just think it's easier because it's right where I'm working and I know to put things away as soon as I'm done. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Let me know down below if this is something that you're interested in, if you might make this in the future. If you'd like to find out more of these secret projects that I'm working on, as well as getting early access, you can join my Patreon. I've got that link in the description down below. I'd really like to thank my patrons now. Thank you, Michelle B, Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Tommy QR, Zach Finch, and Rich Lightfoot. Thank you so much, guys. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at MakeThingsWithRob, and remember to keep making things.